What's your feeling on the receiving room out of 10? Look, if Rashi Rice is not suspended this year, Hollywood, Rashi, and Xavier Worthy, pretty solid. I'm going to say I give it maybe a, a hard seven. What do you give it, Steve? I mean, we have to keep it around the six mark. I think we improved a little bit from last year, but we have yet to see what's going to happen. I'm going seven because I'm going to go ahead and include Jared Wiley in with that. Well, I mean, honestly, I just have to see what happens. It could be much higher than that. I don't know. We'll have to see how Marquise Brown fits in. We have to see what caliber Kelsey's playing at this year. Is he playing back to what he was two years ago? Is he doing what he did last year? Oh, Kelsey's or is he- going to be fired up, Steve. Right. So, I mean, we'll, we'll wait and we'll see how it is, but – I'll say that for the most part it's unproven because you're gonna you don't know what you got with Brown or Worthy just yet in this offense. We don't know if Kadarius Tony or Sky Moore is gonna show up and decide to play football or not. Uh, we don't even know what six or seven receivers they're going to put on the squad yet. So I'm just gonna go with the six for now. I'll take it. You said six, I said seven, we'll go six and a half. He says, Hey, do uh you have any words for Bengals fans? If there are any Bengals fans in here, actually we do. Suck it, suck it. The Bengals are ass, bro. Kathy Welch said she wanted a punter battle. So depressing. Kathy, man, you I, want, you I want think, the punter battle. I don't think there's any battle in the punt god, man. I saw a video of him the other day. That dude could kick the ball over that the mountains could, over there, dude. bro. He's like the Uncle Rico of punters. Like, this good lord, bro. To like, Tommy Townsend had a leg, but this guy might even have more of one. Steve, I'm going to miss, miss our yearly Tommy Townsend camp. Well, now we're going to hang out with the punt god. I guess so. Uh, dude, every year we go, it doesn't matter where it is, we'll pick a spot. The team will adjust itself immediately and put Tommy Townsend right in front of us to watch him kick. All they day. just want us to hang out with Tommy and Harrison. Like, That's like, all they Tom, wanted. What's up, brother? And he's like, ah, just another day. I did and then, catch uh, a, a Harrison well, ha- Butker field goal last right. year. Right. Sometimes Harrison will look at us and he's like, hey, go, go make me a sandwich. And we're like, wait, wait. And he's like, oh, never mind. You're a man. Like, yeah. That happens every year at camp with Harrison Butker. It's insane. To be honest, um, I don't look very manly sometimes. <laughs> oh, my God. Is this real? Then he turns off his Xbox. <laughs> yeah, he turns the Xbox off, goes to bed. Y'all, yes, is this you? <laughs> There he was, baby. There he was. We have Yoss in look, and he look. He said it, security today. He said it's real, man. So it's yeah. real. That's what he's been doing. Yoss. Gamer player says, "What do you predict will be the shocker cut from the roster this season?" Everybody's going to go towards a receiver because I think um, it's either going to be Mako Hardman or Justin Watson. One of those two, and I don't know which one they're going to favor, but one of those two have to get cut. Do they not? To me, the biggest and also goes for Justin Ross. I don't think none of those are like, okay, yes. I think McColl Hardman, Justin Watson, you could kind of say are shockers. A lot of people don't think it'd be shocking, but I think to me it would be shocking if they cut Sky. Like oh, him, yeah, well, for sure. You know, just two years in, getting ready to hit his third Tony year. Shock you? Let's say he's healthy. A little. A little. If he's healthy, yes, it'll shock me. I, th- yeah. I think either of those two guys are kind of on the same page. Sky would be more sho- more shocking because they have, you know, a second-round draft pick invested. I think there's something there if they can figure out how to to use it. Tony's not gave himself much help here, right? So, I mean, I wouldn't be super shocked, but I think if he's healthy, it would still be shocking to me because he's still on the rookie contract. He's on a contract year, which most people like to play out their ass on. And if he can be healthy, then I think he's a weapon. Like, if he can get out of his head. Do we value... I don't with Kadarius Tony, are we are, do do we value the what if factor too much with him? Yeah, I think a lot of people do, but I think that's natural because the what if factor with him is huge. Like, I mean, there are not very many receivers in this league that are more athletic than Kadarius Tony. He might be in the top three athletes in the entire league. Like, you put Tyree Kill up there; he's right there with him. It's just like there's so much there, and he just cannot get his head on straight. It's weird. So I think there's definitely a lot of people that, that value that too much, for sure. He says, Sky's like spending 10 k on a Rolex and finding out that it's fake. Do you still keep it? I think I get where you're coming from, but I think it's more like this gamer player. You spend 10 k on a Rolex, and you find out it might be fake. But but you don't know yet. Like, you <laughs> have you gotta, to wait. You, you have wait to wait. Years before you get it no, you have to wait for somebody to come look at it and evaluate it and let you know like you don't you're not going to throw it away if there's a chance that it's real 
and it's not costing you anything to keep it. Dude, if Felix, Felix, first round pick, pick number 31, 32, 31, 32. I don't remember what it was, 32. Felix had what? One sack last year? Two? Mm. Can't think off the top of my head. Let's just say two. I don't even know. Let's say he comes out this year. He plays a decent amount of snaps. Before Charles Minnie comes back, he musters one sack. He musters five hurries. The rest of the season goes by, he gets one more sack. Let's just say he ends with two, maybe three. After two years, isn't that the equivalent? Yes, and you're not gonna Scott you're not gonna Moore. just get rid of him. You're not gonna. But do I'm that. just saying, will yeah. people react to FAU yes, the same? Absolutely, absolutely. This just, is a okay. What have you done for me lately, fan base? Absolutely. Sam says he made a half a sack last year. Right. So if look, he don't, he's got to do something to do this year? year to not be on the bus train. Because if he gets two or three, I mean, is eight. that really that big of a deal? Yeah, I think he's got to get to six to eight, somewhere in that range, to I'm not be on the bus eight, train. Eight, seven, floor. Like, he's got to do something for people to change their tune. I mean, you, you have to think. I think Sky Moore could have had five touchdowns last year, and there'd still be people saying he sucks and he shouldn't be on the team. Yeah, I've said that again, like, this year. Yeah. Like, if Sky Moore comes out and scores four or five, six touchdowns. I don't know if it changes that much. I don't even know if that yeah. changes the perspective of him. Hey, you. Go buy yourself something nice over at our store, merch.allchiefedup.com. All the proceeds go to helping this channel grow. We appreciate you. Joe Summers from Casey Kingdom says the latest NFL suspension should catch Rasheed Rice and the Chiefs' attention. He's referring to Ian Rappaport coming out and saying the Steelers corner Cam Sutton got suspended without pay for the first eight games of 2024 for violating the NFL's personal conduct policy. The NFL investigated the March incident involving Sutton and determined he violated the personal conduct policy. Sutton will be eligible for reinstatement on October 29th. This dude has misdemeanors, okay, not felonies. Right. And the NFL is saying, hey, you violated the conduct policy eight games. Is this a bad omen? <laughs> for Rasheed Rice, and should the Chiefs really start like preparing here? Because we said the legal process has to pay play out, but if it something happens and Goodell jumps the gun here, this could be eight games minimum for Rasheed Rice coming up quick. It looks like if they found out, you know, he violated the conduct policy, then by all means they probably will. Man, you know if they can give Rasheed Rice eight games, they're going to. Like I would expect less because I feel like. A lot of it can be knocked down. But after seeing this guy's punishment, uh, I'm not so sure about it, man. Logic has told us this entire time that, A, you got to let the legal process play out, and, B, this doesn't seem like it should be like an eight-game to 12-game suspension like everybody's wanting. We said when it's right. all said and done, there's going to be completely settled out of court. There's going to be some civil stuff. Nothing's going to stick. And he may get four games tops, and we thought closer to two. But if the NFL is starting to try to make an example here, and, and maybe they will, I, there's been a lot of this off-the-field incidents throughout the league. It, it's not just the Chiefs. This has happened all kinds of places, man. These players and these – even coaching staffs and stuff, they're just – they're not getting it. These guys are just taking everything for granted, and they're on here just acting a fool. Right. So, I mean, I think we can be looking at that, right? Like, we were hoping for less, but I think eight. Even if he gets eight, Mike, I don't think that's wrong. Like, what he did was, was shitty. Like, he should get suspended. Yeah. By, by all means. I'm not saying he shouldn't. It just depends on when they do it. I hope they don't do it, like, very timely. You know what I'm saying? Like, I hope they don't wait till late in the season to do it or where they make sure it's games that have implications. I felt like they did that with Willie Gay. Was it the year before last? It's like they waited yeah. right up until like the game against Buffalo and a divisional game and stuff, and they're like, oh, well, let's go ahead and suspend him for four games. If, if they just do it and get it over with, I don't care. I would prefer it be the first eight games of the year. Me too. I, although the first eight games pretty crucial. Got the Ravens kicking it off. You've got the Bengals in week two. I, I Are those games must wins? I don't think so. Maybe the overall seeding at the end of the year, those games could come back and factor in. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm with you. I don't want it to be right before the playoffs. I would rather him take the suspension and get back and get back in sync with everybody. But, again, this is his second year. He's had now two off seasons. He has a full year under the playbook going on two years. 
maybe he comes back in and fits in a little more seamlessly than if this would have happened in year one. You know what I'm saying? Obviously. So I don't know, man. Uh, Joe Summers actually, he, he said this, though. I wanted to read this. It says, there is not a direct one-to-one comparison between Sutton and Rice, obviously. Sutton turned himself in after a warrant was issued for an alleged domestic violence. So, again, that was a domestic violence. Rasheed that's, Rice that's is it could be not different. domestic violence. Right. But <laughs> a hit and run doesn't feel like it's any better. But the league is trying to crack down on specifically domestic violence. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it says he entered a pretrial diversion program on a misdemeanor battery charge. So, again, a misdemeanor charge. That's saying one single charge. Rasheed Rice, I think, is up for multiple felonies. So that may not play out well. But then it says Sutton's case was concluded. Okay, Rice's is not. So Sutton's did play out. Like we said, Rice's has not. So the NFL should not take action until his until his uh, case has concluded. And it says Roger Goodell said the NFL was waiting for the legal process to play out and the Chiefs may not have a resolution anytime soon. He also goes on to say it's important that his charges were misdemeanors, whereas Rice faces felonies. He's admitted his role in taking responsibility, but until the conclusion is finalized, the NFL might not make a ruling. And that's what we've kind of said all along. But this sudden smack for eight games... Like, it seems a bit harsh, but again, domestic violence, I think the NFL is really trying to crack down on that. The league has been under a microscope for years because of this, and in 2024, I just think the NFL knows they have to squash this the best they can, to be honest. Yeah, for sure. I think that it's kind of setting a tone. Like, the eight games thing, I can see why this kind of came out and said, hey, this kind of puts the Chiefs on notice. Like, I, I get that. I understand but I'm with you. I think it not being a domestic violence case, which is what the league has specifically tried to crack down on over the years and talked about how they have zero tolerance for it, blah, blah, blah. Maybe it won't be to that magnitude. But now, like, here's the thing. Like, we know Rasheed Rice is going to get a suspension. We just don't know when. We don't know how many games. Yep. Uh, the Chiefs just have to be prepared for whatever, whether it's the first eight games of the season, whether it's next season for eight games. Or maybe, you know, they slap them on the wrist and give them three-game suspension like Alvin Kamara. You never really know. I think they have to try to be as consistent as possible. Alvin Kamara's wasn't domestic, and he only got three games, and maybe it'll fall more into that. But, I mean, they just came out a couple days ago. I can't remember who it was, Jeremy Fowler or whoever. We reported on it, but they were saying, well, it looks like he probably isn't going to get suspended this year because, obviously, the case has not come to a conclusion. Legal process has to play it. So, I mean, I think that's the case. I, I think if that's kind of the precedent that, that the league's setting right now, like let's wait till it all plays out and it's wrapped up in court, then we make a decision. I don't think the Chiefs really have to worry about a suspension this year because you know how those lawyers are. They're going to get in there and they're going to stall. They're going to push it back. They're going it'll, to – it'll take forever to get done. That's what they get so, paid the big bucks for, man. Just keep pushing that thing back. 